All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about how to check the ATF level in an automatic transmission on a front wheel drive vehicle that has a GM 4T40E or 4T45E type assembly. Let's get this cover off and what we're going to be doing here so that we can get access to the fill plug. I'm going to show you the procedure in the service manual and then we're going to get underneath and I'll show you what you have to do to check this. All right, guys, so looking at this transmission fluid check procedure in the service manual, this is a 2005 Chevrolet manual specific to the 4T45E. I'll show you the uh, 4T40 in a minute. It's exactly the same. And part 65 is the fill plug. We'll go underneath and see what that looks like in just a moment, but it's going to be on the passenger side. So the procedure is basically just start up the engine and get it idled, keeping your parking brake on, and um, going through the gear ranges because you want to work the fluid through the transmission. Removing the fluid cap on the top and then you got to get the vehicle up off the ground so you can reach underneath to get to this plug but you got to keep it level. I'll show you what we're using what I'd recommend you do if you don't have a lift. You're going to have to get it up to uh, at least 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be higher than this but it can't be lower than this. And then what you're going to be watching is if you remove that control oil level control plug, which is part 65 in the, in the diagram, you want to see that the fluid comes out of there. So if the fluid comes out, then it's full. And you put the cap back in and you're done. If it doesn't come out, you're going to add it. And they talk to you about adding this in half quart increments until the fluid drains from the plug hole. Now the only difference in this, and there's a bunch of checks here about the condition of the fluid. You know, you may have other problems going on, coolant getting into the transmission, or it may be burnt or old because it hasn't been changed. If it needs to be changed, I'll put a link up here on how you go about changing the fluid in the filter, but this is just a check if you've got it topped off correctly. Um, Dexron 4, or excuse me, Dexron 6 rather, is what you're going to be putting into it. So we're going to be using AC Delco Dexron 6 fluid here just to top it off. This is a one quart container, but you know, use whatever you got, but it needs to be Dexron 6 for these later models. The only difference you'll see with the older manuals, same design on the 4T40. This covers the 4T40E as well as the early 4T45Es. Same temperature cutoff, same procedure, everything's exactly the same. The only difference is, since they're older manuals, they talk about Dexron 3, which is now obsolete and superseded by Dexron 6. That's the only difference. Now let me show you a picture here of, of what this looks like. So here's a blown up graphic of a rebuilt unit. So this is the transmission. And then this piece over here is the gear differential assembly. You've got your stub shaft coming out of here. You'd have your shaft for the axle on the other side, your CV joints attached to either side here. This whole thing together with the transmission and this is called a transaxle. So this is an automatic transaxle unit. Up here is the fill plug they're talking about, and we'll show you that under the hood. And then right over here is the check plug underneath, and I'll show you what that is too. Now the last step they talk about in the manual is after this is all done, um, we can use the old one or the new one, it doesn't matter, but we'll use the new one. It says down here, did you add more than 1.6 quarts? That would be indicative of you having a leak and they'll take you through a leak check. If you didn't add that much, then they'll take you down to the last step, which is just reinstalling that plug and, and applying some part number 12345382. And that's what this is, and all this is is medium th thread locker blue. One, two, three, four, five, three, eight, two. If we zoom in and see that part number there. So you need to put a little bit of thread locker back on that plug before you put it back on. And then there's a torque value on that plug that I'll roll down at the bottom because it's not on this page. Actually, wait, there it is. I'm sorry. My eyes deceived me. Nine foot pounds would be the torque value on that 11 millimeter plug and 12 newton meters. All right, guys, just a quick view of how we've got it up. We've got four jack stands. We're using these ESCO three-ton low-profile types for here. And that'll get you off the ground enough to access the plug, but keep everything level. 
All right, with the decorative beauty cover off the engine, we'll be able to get access to where we need to get to for that fill plug we saw in the service manual and the photo. So it's always going to be on the driver's side of the engine. So if you run your hand through here, and, and depending on the model, you've got different sets of hoses. This is a 2009 Cobalt. It's obviously very cluttered here. But if we come in under here, I'll tap on this guy. This is that black fill plug that we need to get off. So we can get these hoses out of the way where we can get a grip on it. It just unscrews Lefty Lucy. I took a paper towel and wiped off all the dirt and crud off the top of this cap and also off of the sides of these hoses so nothing falls in here when we take this off. So you just need to unthread it and then we'll remove it. It just looks like this. Right. So set that aside and then we're going to come in with a really long funnel. I like this particular type here from Flowtool, but you're going to need something of this type of design. And we're just going to run this down into the cavity where the plug came out of. Just like that. Now we're set on the top side. Now let's go look on the bottom. All right, guys, just make sure that funnel's seated all the way in so we don't get any splash over. All right, guys, underneath the vehicle, here's the bottom pan of your engine where the oil is. This L-shaped pan is the transmission pan. Over on this side of the L itself towards the passenger side, just like we saw in the photo, is where we'll find this check plug. It's right here. It's an 11 millimeter check plug. So before you get the engine started and warming it up, we're going to go ahead and crack the torque on this. Make it easier to remove. Now you got to leave it on as you start the engine. But we're just going to loosen it. We're going to leave it on, but we're going to loosen it. This way, it'll make it easier for us to get under here and take it off when everything's warmed up. When this is all hot, it'll be harder to do what we just did. All right, let's get the procedure started. All right, guys, let's go into our Tech 2. Let's build this particular vehicle. We're going to go on to powertrain. This is an LAP engine. Automatic, of course. Transmission data. Let's go see what our temperature is on our fluid. Now you don't have to have this particular kind of scan tool, but you're going to need something that can read the PID for this particular value. All right, here we are. So we're sitting at 89 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this to heat up to 104 degrees, and then we'll be able to start the check procedure. All right, once you're at the right temperature, you're going to come under here and you're going to remove the plug. I'm going to set a little thing down here to catch any drippings we get. We're going to take the plug out and then we're going to go up on top and we're going to add until it starts drizzling. Remember, this is hot, so make sure you keep your fingers out of the way. Plate a little bit more. Shouldn't be a lot coming out. All right, so the fact that it's coming out says we're good. We don't need to add anything. So we're going to put this back in, and we're going to shut the engine off. All right, we're going to put our cap back on. We've cleaned it off. It's typically going to be dirty, so this is a good opportunity to clean that all off. There's a vent in this thing, too, so another reason to keep it clean. And then we're going to remove our funnel and put it back. Now, what if when we took the plug out, what if nothing came out? Well, we would have added very slowly here until it started coming out the way you saw. In this particular vehicle, 
we're good. We didn't have to add any. In fact, we probably are a little bit over. So nothing to show there, but it would have been the same thing if we had to add it. All right, so I'm going to put this back in, screw it down, and then I'm going to go lock tight the plug and do the torque. All right, guys, I'm going to re-thread this back on by hand. Snug it up by hand. Put the cap back on our thread locker. Now you're going to lose a little bit drizzling out there. If you want, you can top things off before you pull your funnel. In terms of just putting in as much as you took out. Again, this is an 11 millimeter going to 9 foot pounds or 108 inch pounds as I'm going to be doing here. This type of torque wrench just kind of gives you a detent. It doesn't really have a click. But that's it. 108 inch pounds. And now what we're going to do, we're just going to Gonna give a squirt of brake clean to uh, get the residue off. With that, the job's done, guys. I hope this helps you out in how to check the level on your 4T40E or 4T45E GM automatic transaxle. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to help. If you found this video useful and it saved you some time and money on doing this job yourself, Appreciate you paying it forward and hitting that like button. And as always, thanks for watching.